And, and, oh, see, she records after the pitch. Great. Trip. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. So uh, again, some people will probably straggle in. They always do. Um, this is a, a hour and a half meeting. Um, Kelly, you do not have to take all of that. I know that's a long time, but uh, you have as much time as you want. And then, um, and uh, uh, we do not have minutes this meeting to, to approve. And so Kelly, why don't you introduce yourself and your partner in crime from Macy's and uh, go ahead and start your presentation. Well, thank you, John. And, and no, we probably won't take the full time for sure, but um, I'll go ahead and introduce myself and, and my partners in crime. So I'm Kelly Talent Martin. I'm the senior property manager here for Vintage Fair Mall as owned by Mace Rich. Um, I, with me today, we have senior marketing manager, Annie Amys. Um, she's been with them all about five years. And then also um, my additional partner in crime, which is Leela Ahmad. Um, she comes to us from Macy's. She's been with Macy's about eight years. And um, I'll go ahead and start the presentation. And um, Macy's will, Leela will jump in about midway through. Um, we have a handful of slides where we can talk about some of the great things, some of the exciting things that I think maybe not everybody is, is aware that, that Macy's has had going on um, kind of silently in the background and, and some more exciting things uh, most recently. So with that, I'll jump in and give me just a second as I share my screen and, and kind of get the housekeeping part of it. Great. And then just, and again, it's in the wrong slide. Okay. So you should be seeing a slide that says vintage fair. Yes, you got it. Is it, it is on vintage fair or does it show the demographics? No, vintage fair. You see the front of the store. Okay, fantastic. This is very strange. Um, Okay, give me one second. I'm just gonna, let me readjust. Uh, do this one more time. I think it had the wrong screen. I have multiple screens, which is really helpful for me personally. And when I present, not so much. Yep, been there. <laughs> so bear, bear with me just a second. Let's see. Yeah, we'll do share. I think I grabbed the wrong screen to share. So I think what my problem was, yep, three. Okay. And then we'll put this on slideshow. There you go. Done. Okay. So then you should be seeing the front of the mall. Correct. Fantastic. Okay. This is going to be only confusing for me then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll just jump in. And again, I won't take all this, all that time, but thank you for the, the opportunity and the offer. I do appreciate that because we really have had a lot going on. Um, again, uh, my name is Kelly and, and I joined the mall back in 2017, although I've been in the industry and in this market for the last 20 some odd years or so. Um, and I got into it right out of graduating from, from UOP. Um, I've worked here locally for both malls in the Stockton area, and then our Fresno counterpart, which is a sister center to us, um, Fashion Fair Mall in Fresno, and then also at uh, Capitola Mall and Santana Row over in the Bay Area. So I'm happy to be here in Modesto. I do prefer the Central Valley. It's where my family lives, um, and so I was happy to join the team back in 2017. Um, Joining us today, as we already talked about, is my senior marketing manager, Annie Amys, and the Macy's store manager, Leela Ahmad. Um, first of all, what I'd like to tell you is that um, the presentation slides that I'm going to be presenting today is content adapted from our market profile, and that's available to anybody at macerich.com. It's what we use to court new retailers in the market. Um, it's also what we'll use as a base point or jumping off point for how business has developed and evolved over the past 18 months um, through the pandemic and why we are optimistic about the future and going into holiday 2021. I can't believe I'm even talking about holiday, but we are um, holiday 2021 and, and through 2022. Um, it, and we still have a back to school season, so not to get too far ahead, but 
um, in retail, we're already planning six to eight months, nine months out. Um, so a little bit of a disclaimer here, I don't have a crystal ball. Um, at this point, what I'm going to share with you today is purely anecdotal and a snapshot, if you will, or a lens um, into how the shopping center has evolved over the past year and what we've experienced and, and why we're optimistic about the future. There's been a lot of great changes here at the shopping mall, um, and we're happy to share those with you today. Um, also keep in mind that the COVID restrictions had a significant impact, as you all know, and as we've talked about, um, and, and they have impacted the business as you would have expected those restrictions um, for the past year and a half now. And I say that because only as of June 15th, when the governor relaxed that tier restriction, was the common area able to be fully reopened? And by reopened, that means amenities, that means common area seating, that means you know the mask um, relaxation, um, some of those social distancing protocols. And so really up until June 15th, we were still experiencing um, a lot of those protocols and restrictions. So um, we of course remain vigilant in our CDC uh, recommended protocols. And, and we'll talk a little bit about more about that later. Um, for those of you that may not be aware, Mesa Rich is a REIT, which is an acronym for a real estate investment trust. We're a publicly traded company and we host quarterly earnings, um, which are made public and available um, at that same website, which is maserich.com. Um, again, what the, slides, the slide deck is what we use to court new tenants and it includes metrics that I'm thrilled to be sharing with you about the shopping center and the market. And they're absolutely available to the marketplace and, and our counterparts at the city and, and the county um, as they need uh, to use that to court new business into the Valley. So again, what I'm sharing with you is purely anecdotal and based upon what we, what we have experienced over the past year um, and talking with retailers and restaurants. Next up, we have a slide of our play area. And Trish, if you could just let me know that you see the play area, that would be helpful. Are you on mute? I, no. Oh. <clears throat> Your slide did not advance yet. Okay. And that's the other challenge. It's really delayed. Is there something that I can do differently so that it's not delayed? You're in a slideshow. Um format here so you should just be clicking forward and the slide should advance okay and and that's what I did and it's showing me that it it has it up that is the screen that I'm sharing but yet you don't see the play area yet it should say no. over no it's the same image that you started with nothing changed here okay you, you still might have your green bar around green frame around a different screen Okay, so um, I'm not sure exactly, because even the screen that I'm sharing that says you are screen sharing shows the play area. So let me, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and see if maybe. Make sure your PowerPoint is not open in multiple places. Make sure uh, you have, have it just once. All right. And here comes my technical support. <laughs> Come on in, Annie. <laughs> You're showing this. So okay. You need to be in presentation mode here I, in advance. Okay, that's what I did, but let me bear with us. I'm very sorry, guys. No problem. Uh, you have time. Yeah, right. So I'm gonna close that. I'm sharing. There you go, you advanced. Yeah, you're still showing this though. You're in yeah. presentation. So when I do that, it comes over here and then that's what I advance. That's what we're seeing now. Okay, so you can see the play area now. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna advance one real quick. Just okay. let me know if you see the the next slide, Trish. Sure. Okay. Do you see a child with a mask on? Nope. This is what we're seeing. Okay. It's popping you out. It sounds like it's staying focused on your main. Yeah. There you go. You advanced at that time. Now I see a child with a mask. Okay, that's fine. So I'm just going to, I'm going to stay out of the presentation mode because when I do that, for some reason it, it changes. Um, so we'll just, that's okay. We'll just... And I can see your cursor moving. So we're in, we're with you right now. <laughs> it's either super live action or half action. I'm so I'm sorry for that. All good. And it looks like some additional people joined us. John, did you want to want me to stop and, and have them introduce themselves? No, we'll, we'll just do that after your presentation. 
Okay, great. All right. So, um, so sorry about that. And thank you for your patience as I work through that. Um, so up in front of you, we have our children's play area and like other family entertainment destinations, it was closed since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, we're targeting to reopen the children's play area um, this coming summer. I, I bring it up and I show it here because as you'll see on the next slide, our common area was severely affected as you, as you may recall um, with the food court tables and chairs and the common area seating, um, which had to be removed. Um, but that was, for us, it was not enough just simply removing them to keep people from using them. And so you'll see on the next slide, we subsequently wrapped the entire play area in black, our black fabric barricade. Um, it was important to us to do this um, because our play area is sponsored by Sutter Health. And so it became a unique challenge for us during the pandemic to deliver on a partnership agreement, which was put in place in prior years and based upon a busy play area. And, and as you can imagine, cutting off the traffic to that play area put us in jeopardy of losing that partnership. And, and more importantly, just not being able to deliver on what we said we would deliver and bring to the table for our, our partner, Sutter Health. And, and so, and in that agreement, they also had some high uh, profile uh, advertising and also on mall health events, hosting of health events. And for reasons that we all know and familiar with, um, they did not host those health events. Um, they were focused um, as we would expect on the hospital and, and doing what they needed to do. Um, so we wanted to take the opportunity to make good and deliver on the partnership. And so what we came up with is wrapping the entire area in this black fabric barricade. Um, and we think it, it turned out great. It, it, it was able to, to help us um, deliver on a, a partnership agreement that, that we needed to and, and gave unique messaging um, to, the, to the community. And I think that, that it worked out really great for that. Um, so it's just one example of how we adapted during the current operating environment and leveraged the unique opportunity to benefit the partners in a way that also supported the needs of the community. Next is our market overview slide, and it's a little data heavy, and I uh, apologize for that. I'm not gonna talk about all of these things in detail, but I do wanna highlight a couple of things that maybe you're not aware of. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this slide evolves over the next two years. This information is from 2018. We update this um, every year, but, but most significantly every two years, and we would have updated that this um, in the beginning of 2020, and as you, as you can imagine, um, those numbers were just kept fluctuating, not necessarily for us from a tenant perspective, but from a population growth and um, the annual income and the discretionary spending, which is really what, and then the annual visitors, which we'll talk more about here in a minute, which is really what um, this slide um, highlights. And so it'll be interesting to see how that evolves. I don't think that we'll be able to fully realize those changes or see those changes until the end of 2021 as things continue to settle. Our trade area encompasses out to 15 miles. This past year, we saw traffic coming from as far as the Bay Area in greater quantities due to the closures that they were experiencing out there. And so that was very interesting for us because it was something that we couldn't necessarily anticipate or staff up for. Um, store managers were commenting about people coming from further distances and just wanting to get out and drive. I mean, we're always a great, I mean, we have beautiful scenery um, and we're definitely on the way through to other places like Yosemite and Tahoe and things like that. But people were actually coming out and making the trip out to us just simply to drive it as a means for the mall as a destination. So we saw that more and more. There's also construction winds um, that we'll talk a little bit more later. And, and one of the things that happened out of last year was when construction halted in San Francisco, we were able to actually pick up construction steam because we had trades that now were available. So our subcontractors had greater availability, um, greater flexibility in getting our projects done. And so in some cases that allowed us to open stores as much as a week earlier, which equ equates to thousands and thousands of dollars for us. And so those were wins, they're unexpected wins that came out of, of last year. We now have five anchors now. So um, if you haven't noticed, or if you haven't been to the mall recently, um, we now have five anchors. So Furniture City, and I'll show you some pictures in a little bit, opened in the former um, Forever 21 space. Dick Sporting Goods moved over um, from our uh, out parcel space. Um, and they're uh, doing about two and a half times the amount of traffic and sales um, as they would have anticipated pre-COVID. Those numbers have been even more slightly elevated during COVID 
um, for a lot of, of uh, reasons that, that you would expect um, due to, to closures and things like that and essential retail. Um, additional stores that we added uh, last year were Aries and Airy and Lids, and I'll have some photos a little bit later. Our shopper traffic, I'll take just a moment and talk about our shopper traffic. Our shopper traffic um, is 9 million visitors a year on an average year. And uh, when we reopened in May 28th, our first reopening is what, I'll, what I'm calling it, most malls saw traffic coming back cautiously around 40 to 50% of prior year traffic. Um, Vintage Fair Mall had a much steeper uh, trajectory going from, we reopened the 28th, I will tell you, that was just in front of Memorial Day weekend. We had um, about a week of, of soft traffic is what I would call it, um, at around 40%. But within two weeks, we were right back up to 70 to 80% of prior year's traffic. And then onwards, as we head into that headed into fourth quarter, we were anywhere between 90 to 105%, which at that time, as you can imagine, um, we were sort of wondering, you know, how are we going to, to function? It was great. It was a great um, challenge to have, to have all that traffic coming back so quickly, but it created a lot of needs on the back end for us. Logistically, how do we move this traffic around and still maintain social distancing and talk about mass protocols and talk about healthy habits and things like that. And so um, we put some things in place to help us get through that season, um, but our traffic came back very quickly. Today, we're averaging about 94% of 2019's traffic. Um, and we trend higher around the holidays, as you would expect. So 4th of July was slightly higher. Sales, our restaurants are rebounding. And as you have heard, they've, they've suffered a great deal this past year. Um, we were not, uh, we were not an exception to that. The mall was not, the mall food partners were not an exception to that. Um, and they were challenged with the on again and off again closing. So for us, you know, as we work through the pandemic, um, I had at any given time 14 retailers um, or restaurants or service providers that were open on this property. And so it became a challenge to us or to myself uh, in particular, when we talk about the mall being closed, we had to be very specific and say, it's the common area, it's the interior common area that we are not inviting you to linger in. And so that communication became very critical and, and just talking and engaging with the shoppers to help them understand what the new um, restrictions and protocols are. And again, fast forward to June 15th, the common area is fully open. Those amenities are coming back online slowly but surely. Um, so it'll be good. I look forward to moving into the into the uh, Q3, Q4, um, but again, we're, we're cautiously optimistic and we're still following the CDC um, protocols as you would expect. Um, our retailers also struggled with the delivery fees and the employee turnover. Um, the employee health, as you would imagine, deliveries um, and, and things along those things. I, I, I have more about this that we can talk about, but I think this group is really fully um, apprised of, of those things and experienced those things in one way or another. So I won't, I won't take too long on that. Um, the income, I will just point out on this slide while we're, where we're sitting here in this slide is that um, due to the relatively low cost of living here in the Valley, the mall benefits from a higher discretionary spending potential. And those were for, further boosted by the stimulus payments. Um, all is not rosy, as you know. I mean, we have had um, some pains this past year, as you may have seen reported. We have lost um, a couple of retailers, um, some of which were anticipated um, given their health going into 2020, and some were not. Those include GNC, Garage, um, most recently, uh, Coach. Uh, this is just another trade area slide that I like to show because it really shows that People are traveling upwards of 90, from 90 miles away to visit the mall. It's super regional, um, re, regional mall, and you would expect them to have a, a deep draw, but I think it's even more interesting to see how far our shoppers are willing to come from. Um, our average expenditure per visit is $132, which I like to talk about this because it, it, it exceeds the industry ben benchmark of $99. And we certainly saw that reflected in the pandemic spending. Um, Sales this past year were a mixed bag, you know, with, with back to school, um, we had sort of less trips per, per shopper, 
um, but there were higher purchases per shopper as they came. Um, they were purchasing more per trip. And then of course, affected by area closures, retail in some cases became the sole entertainment um, aside from outsider at home activities. And we certainly saw that reflected in the traffic and the shopping patterns that emerged over last year and continue into this year. The next demographic snapshot really just breaks down the population, um, the, the households, our average household income, medium household. Um, traffic was also driven by our local workforce. And I think that's important to, to call out here because we had in essence a, an essential workforce. Our, our community continued to go to work every day for the most part. Um, those in agriculture, food manufacturing, health and government, our largest employers here in the Valley, um, they were considered essential and continued to work. They were also already accustomed to social distancing. They were practicing mask wearing or not wearing depending on the environment and because they were already following some of those protocols at work. Um, and we really saw that reflected in, in who we experienced on mall. Um, those good habits helped lift the traffic and the shopping quickly here at, at Vintage. Um, next, I'll just talk a little bit about our new anchor stores and our new small shop tenants. Um, first up, we had Airy. They grand opened July 3rd in 3,000 square feet on the lower level. Um, they, I love the story because they opened amidst the pandemic. So when everyone, I love getting on the phone with people from out of market because they say, oh, well, the city's closed. No, the city's not closed. Thank you very much. The city's not closed. Here's the number. Here's the person you need to talk to. Here's how you can get done what you needed to get done. Um, and, and even when it came down to trades, we had you know contractors we could pull from and, and, and help them. And, and the reason they were saying those things is not that um, they were trying to pull one over or anything like that, is that that's what they were experiencing in other markets. And if they experienced it in um, say San Joaquin market, then they applied it to Stanislaus. They don't know where those lines are. Um, per se. And, and so we were continually um, handholding and connecting them to the right people. And so um, I really appreciate all of our, our um, help that we have and, and contacts in the city. It made a big difference. So they opened in the lower level location in 3000 square feet, um, right in time for the holiday weekend, which was really important because that was, they were able to squeeze in 10 days of sales right before our second closure, uh, July, I think it was July 14th, we close the common area of the interior. Um, they specialize in, it's an American Eagle um, collection of sleepwear um, and undergarments and swimwear. We're optimistic about our business as we look forward to 2021 and 2022. And I think as I go through the next few, few slides, you'll see why. Um, we are experiencing and did experience this past quarter, first quarter, double digit um, sales growth as we pivot away from the disruption caused by COVID in 2020 and 2021. Sales are rebounding and in line with 2019 levels, pre-COVID levels, levels, excuse me, our sales per square foot are $745. Occupancy as of year in 2020 is 90.3%, which is very strong, uh, healthy percentage. Generally speaking, we hover around 94. Um, our leasing environment significantly improved. We're seeing demand from traditional and non-traditional uses like fitness, health, and wellness. Retailers recognize the need to maintain existing space and secure new space, and we're seeing that in renewals. At Vintage Fair, our focus remains on bringing new to market retailers and different uses is our top priority. That'll continue to be the case in 2021, 2022. In 2000, and I'm gonna jump down to the next slide because it's just, in 2000, we opened up 200,000 square feet of new retail space. That's pretty significant, uh, you know, 200,000 uh, square feet of new retail space. So Furniture City um, was a large portion of that. It's 154,000 square feet. They activated all three um, floors. Um, and then in 2021, um, we'll see over 23,000 square feet that will be open by fall. Liz is an additional tenant that opened November 24th and 1,000 square feet. It is a second store here. So we do have two lids, one's upstairs, one's downstairs. Um, and as you know, they focus and carry uh, license, MLB, ML, NBA, NFL, all the other acronyms you can think of um, gear in a wide variety of styles. Um, also um, our specialty leasing program, that was an unexpected win because as um, some of those events and activities started to shut down, you had some of the craft fairs and some of the um, 
other outdoor vendor opportunities started to cease, we saw increased interest coming, wanting to come into the mall and use some of our common area. And so the specialty leasing program has been a way that we can um, help a local business person step into a retail space in an experiential um, sort of capacity. They can start on mall, test out the market with the product, get a feel for the customer, and then either stay on mall, meaning common area, or move in line. And we did have the opportunity through the closures that I mentioned for them to move in line. And so Gypsy Moon, um, which is fantastic. They started on a cart, I want to say a year and a half ago. They graduated into this space. We have DS Toys, as you all know, Toys R Us. Um, it left a big, I think, hole in the market with, with toys and that type of thing. So DS Toys has seen some success and also services. So hairology, things like getting your hair cut at the mall um, is coming back, some of those services. And you're starting to see that through our specialty tenants. And so this has been a great program. It's on demand, it's agile, it's immersive, immediately immersive. Um, we also had our anchor stores, as we talked about. So Dick's Sporting Goods opened. They are doing two and a half times the amount of sales and traffic, roughly, um, of course, buoyed by the pandemic. Um, but that is on, on uh, track with what they would have expected to do coming from the out parcel into the mall. Um, and there's some, the next slide is kind of interesting. It's uh, socially, of course, it's lagging. Um, it's just what a, a, a somewhat socially distanced um, grand opening looks like. So rather than condensing all of those events and activities um, into, you know, a three-day period, um, which is so important to really usher in a new tenant and welcome a new tenant, they really spread out all of those activities. And so what you saw is you saw deals that lasted for a week to two weeks um, so that we could have those socially distanced. Um, and of course, there's in the middle of that is not so socially distanced all the workers that work together. So I have to excuse that photo. Um, next up, we have Furniture City, which we talked about a little bit already. They are a regional provider. Um, they have 13 uh, stores spanning um, Southern California over into uh, New Mexico is the furthest store. Um, all three floors are activated, which is fantastic. Um, because Forever 21 was operating just on two. So, and they are, they feature uh, furniture collections from Ashley's signature design to Robert Michael, Bro Hill and, and the rest. It was a missing uh, element for us. So we're excited to add that into the merchandising mix. Here are some interior photos for you guys to see. Forever 21 spent um, a lot of money. This was their flagship store and they spent a lot of money on the interior improvements and it fits perfectly um, with the, the reimagined space for furniture. And so you see there's a lot of additional uh, track lighting. It made moving into this space, if you go back to kind of the winds of 2020, it made Furniture City coming into this location um, really, I won't say streamlined because it was a lot of work, but it made it that much easier to get them open and operating quickly in time for um, Black Friday, which is when they grand open. Um, next up, we have Macy's and Macy's has gone through some significant changes. Um, so I will kick it over to Leela um, to talk about Macy's. And then I will just advance the slides. So just let me know when you're ready, Leela. Thank you, Kelly. Okay, looks like I'm off mute. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Leela Maud, as um, Kelly introduced myself. Been with Macy's for eight years. Um, kind of same story as Kelly, right after college, um, I was recruited into their um, EDP program. Um, so I've been, I've held several roles, been in just several stores and am now in Modesto for nine months. So going on a year here. Um, couple things, I'm originally a Bay Area kid, went to school to Cal State East Bay and did my master's at Santa Clara University, um, but so excited to learn the community here in um, Modesto. So a few things about Macy's, um, just one to um, kind of level set in terms of where we rank in total company. We annualized $53 million and um, actually gained eight rankings um, in the last year. So. We've really done um, kind of a great job with our sales. 
Um, so in terms of our customer, it's kind of the same as with the mall tier one Latino and um, definitely making sure that that is kind of top line of our customers. Um, and then just talking about all the newness that's happened at Macy's since 2019, we had a um, growth door remodel happen in 2019, which was completed in November of 2019. The most significant, if you walk into the store, you'll see is our beauty department where we spent um, almost $3.5 million. Um, you know, what you're seeing pictures of the exteriors and interiors, carpet, lighting upgrades, all of this was encompassed in that growth door um, uh, remodel that we had. But ever since, um, you know, through the pandemic as well, we had some really kind of um, upgrades happening and we, our sales front was this um, holding strong. So um, in terms of kind of moving on to what's been new at Macy's ever since the remodel, um, we have, if we go to the next slide, we have our um, Joe jo Malone joined us. We are actually only 12 stores in the whole company that have it. And we're ranked number six for all of Joe Malone in um, Macy's. Um, and this has been a great addition to our store. It also has brought really a great um, customer base um, as well as added volume to the store. Um, and then next we have, I believe the Chanel um, install and shop tenants. We have something called the KOP, Kit of Parts, which is also different high-end beauty brands that um, only 17 stores in the company have. Um, again, higher AUR, so definitely an elevated um, customer and shopping um, that's been happening here in our store. Um, we also have some I know before we um, go on to backstage, um, also a few other installs that are happening. Our Chanel install, um, again, we are one of the only five stores without being flagship. So at Macy's, a little bit of information, if you do $120 million or more, you're considered a flagship store. Um, and we have a new Chanel install that opened on June 7th that we have as well as only flagship doors. So that was a real big win for us. Um, and you know, Chanel growing and again, that elevated customer and AUR has really been um, helpful for our store. Um, and then we're going to move on to backstage. I don't know if you guys have uh, been into the mall or Macy's, but if you come to um, Macy's and walk from the mall entrance on the first floor, you'll be wet, met with Macy's backstage. This is our um, store within a store concept. So it's basically its own store, but it's our off price strategy. Um, so you'll have every FOB in here, meaning you have men's offerings, women's offerings, handbags, cosmetics, um, jewelry, and designer handbags. So um, if you haven't um, checked it out, please do. And what we're really excited about is that Macy's Backstage will have a 8% increase in total sales in the store. Um, and then just the first year alone, it's projected to do $2 million. We're actually going to be surpassing that. We had two grand openings um, and we were the number one store in the region in our grand opening in terms of volume and traffic. And even though this was 2020, as you guys, see, as you guys can see, we had a great um, you know, uh, opening as well as we had people show up, even though we had uh, COVID restrictions, we you know, had health um, and safety measures in place, but it really was a great event. We had our mayor come from the city of Modesto as well um, to join in on the celebrations and the grand opening. Um, so I think the next slide will show you some of the pictures um, from the event. Um, and then I, like I spoke about, you know, all these new enhancements um, have really added to our um, sales and traffic, and we feel very confident for, um, you know, holiday 21, like Kelly mentioned, yep, we're already planning for holiday 21, um, and, um, you know, not kind of sharing specific numbers, but we're so excited to, um, you know, be in line with our 2019 um, volume, which um, has been very um, optimistic and a real great win for us. Um, also, you know, 2020, um, 
you know, most retailers, it was a little bit more difficult. Um, but for us, we were making our sales plan, um, as well as we overtook two stores uh, volume. So um, we do more volume than Pleasanton now, um, as well as um, we're now chasing Fresno, but with our backstage, um, you know, we should be able to overtake them as well. Um, so believe that wraps up the um, Macy's portion. Just wanted to highlight all the newness and everything that's happening in our store um, and gaining all these new customers that will definitely um, help overall uh, the mall and our um, community here in Modesto. Thanks, Leela. Leela, I um, bypassed the slide with the video. So why don't I, I'll go ahead and play that now. Um, so this is, I don't, do you want to intro it, Leela? Yeah, so this is the um, scope of the work that was done for um, 2019 of our growth remodel. Do you see Speediachi on the screen, Leela? Yep. So I will say that it plays smoothly on my system, but I do know that it's slightly disjointed as it comes across. So, and I don't think you guys can hear the music. Um, so you might want to um, feel free to jump in and kind of narrate a little bit if you want to as it flies through. It's a, it's, I'll leave it at that. So it's like I was saying, beauty is the most significant of where we um, spent a lot of the um, capital. Um, and it's definitely paying off as well, because in the region, we are the number one beauty department, um, as well as, you know, we were able to grow. Um, for example, in fragrances, we went from 26 cases to 46. So we're definitely offering a lot more to our customers. Also, as you can see, we had a, you know, complete upgrade to lighting, carpets, floors. Thanks, Layla. I just love that footage that um, the contractor provided for Macy's when they finished that remodel um, because it, it was such a substantial um, remodel as you saw in the very beginning of that, that photo. They, they gutted that entire first floor and, and redid the entire entire floor. And, and there's just no better way to, to really see that it, or experience it. You experience it. I get to experience it when I walk into it for the first time, but once it gets crowded with people, as it so often is, you lose some of that, you just lose that ability to see that big picture. And so I was so grateful that they took uh, that drone footage and, was, and they were able to share it with us. So um, it's, it's just, they did an amazing job. So we're, we're, we're really pleased to be able to share that. Um, well, thank you, Leela, for that. I really appreciate your, your partnership and being able to participate in this presentation today. For this group, you know, Macy's has been a great partner to the mall for all for many reasons, as I'm sure you can imagine. But but for us, it's so important to to have good partners, to be doing good work and to work with people that you like to work with and just genuinely enjoy working with. And, and I have to say that that I, I really enjoy working with Leela and, and even the predecessor, uh, Abby, um, prior to her. It, it's It's been great to work with them, in, especially in light of the past year of all the COVID protocols that we have in place. Um, there's a lot of reasons to be optimistic. I think you see um, those op those uh, reasons that you saw in the video, um, you know, and, and just the fact that I love talking about Macy's statistics because Macy's does really well in their beauty department and some of their top selling brands, you know, Chanel is their number one selling brand. And, and I just don't think people 
think about that or realize that how significant that is the fact that Joe Malone, you know, they're the top sales are number six in the entire portfolio for, for sales for Joe Malone. It, it's a significant brand. Um, it's a, it's a high end brand and, and people are spending money here in the Valley and it's driven by their ability through the discretionary spending, right? So our, our, our housing costs are relatively inexpensive, you know, to the, compared to the Bay area. Um, and that discretionary spending, we're seeing that, um, they're spending their, those dollars. And certainly we saw them spending stimulus and, and, um, you know, just the addition of the backstage concept, adding, you know, 8% overall lift to, to Macy's um, going into uh, going into next year, that's that's huge. So there's a lot of great changes that have happened um, in 2020. There's a lot of good things that have come out of 2020. And there's a lot of good things coming out of 2021. And I, I think sometimes we feel a little bad talking about them because it's sort of couched in the rest of the bad things a little bit. So, um, but, but certainly there's, there's a lot of good news coming out of it. So um, we'll jump to, uh, let me get over to talk just a little bit about our community partnerships and, and Macy's plays a big part of that for us. Um, on the screen in front of you is, is a host of things that we did um, and continue to do through 2020 and 2021. Um, we, really immediately made our real estate available to the Office of Emergency Services. And, and they didn't have a need to take us uh, up on the offer of, of leveraging the real estate immediately in the way that I thought they would in sort of the large capacity. Um, but we're able to sort of extend the offer through smaller programs throughout the year in 2021 included. So, you know, we did, we hosted the American Red Cross blood drives. We hosted um, four drives that were socially distanced, had mass protocols in place, that kind of thing. Um, and those were fully booked and very successful. Million Meals Challenge, I think one of the things that we saw here in the in the community was that um, people really needed access to, to the food bank. And so we worked with um, our local food bank to, to do a food drive for that, raising over 28,000 um, pounds of food collected to date. Um, that was part of a, a bigger campaign for Mesa Rich where we raised over 1.1 million meals um, for, for the, um, America, really. We also um, had parking lot activation, so Office of Emergency Services, as I talked about, Soroptimus Community Christmas Tree, which I'm talking about today because I really want to um, lay the, the thought in your mind that they are coming back this holiday season. So um, we were excited to work with them and, and help them reinvent um, what it could be for 2020 through a socially distanced um, giving tree. Um, and this year they'll come back on mall. So we're excited to, to work with them again on that. We did host uh, COVID rapid testing and it still continues in our parking lot. They're averaging about hundred tests per day. Um, at the peak right now, it's, it's less so as you would expect. Um, we're also working with um, a, a pop-up vaccine um, clinic here on the next slide. You'll see that in a minute. And also, you know, one of the things we spent a lot of time doing in 2020 and it, and it, and it broke my heart a little bit. It started to grind if I'm being perfectly honest. This is this need to have to con continually tell people what to do, where to walk, how to walk. How, I mean, we told them everything, you know, don't sit here, sit there. You know, here's when you can get on the escalator. Here's how many people could get on the elevator with you when you got on the elevator. And so during holiday, um, our marketing department created a health and wellness rewards. And, and it was really just, um, it was born out of kind of that frustration of like, we need to be engaging with the shopper in a good way, not not just in a, in a negative way, telling them what to do um, and how to do it. And so we we distributed health and wellness rewards and also what we called surprise and delight opportunities. So we gave out um, random acts of kindness through gift cards and, and product um, in partnership with our retailers um, just to help make someone's day. And, and that was a lot of fun for our team. And we also had the opportunity to give um, laptops through the Mace, through Mace Rich, who has 34 shopping centers. Um, we were able to donate 50 laptops to the Boys and Girls Club of San Luis County. So we were excited to be able to do that. Um, Love Modesto is something that we partnered with um, and hosted a veteran card making party um, where we distributed, uh, were made and they were distributed to local veterans hospitals. We did that outside as, as we had to flex with some of those things. Um, upcoming program for this year is school sense program, which I'm very excited about because um, those programs generally uh, generate 200 to $300,000 in sales to 
the shopping mall or the shopping community that partners in it. Um, and it, it's a way to give back funding to the schools. And so there's a rewards opportunity. Um, so where we reward people for shopping local um, and helping provide funding to area schools. The vaccine clinic will start, um, or look to start that here on Fridays in partnership with Curatov, a Stanislaus County partner provider. Kids Club is coming back, which is exciting for us. Of course, it was remote for a time being. Then of course we did the community hospice clothing drive um, to help with the Hope Chest uh, thrift stores. Um, they saw a uh, diminished supply. They were having real supply issues um, in donations. And so we were able to bring them on property and, and help them generate donations. Holiday happenings. It's never too soon to talk about Santa. <laughs> And so um, it is too soon to talk about Santa, but we're going to talk about Santa. <laughs> um, and so this is what the program looked like last year. It's a socially distanced program. Um, we're anticipating keeping that in place um, because we think it just allows better flow um, of people coming in to visit Santa and just also not knowing what we have ahead of us. We're being cautiously optimistic, but we're also anticipating um, needing to continue to do things differently, not necessarily the same as 2020. Sorry, I keep looking at the year because I keep trying to move ahead to 22, um, but we're, we're just saying uh, cautiously optimistic and also just keeping an eye on for anything that we might need to change and remaining open and flexible. Um, this is what a socially distant Santa looks like if you hadn't experienced um, that with us last year. Um, it was taken before mall hours, so there's not a whole lot of people, but um, so we anticipate that being the case this year. Next up is some of the signage that I talked about. So literally we, we put signage everywhere. We tried to make it as simple as possible. My goal last year was that if you need to do something differently in my shopping mall, that I made it the easy thing to do. Um, and so that included a lot of additional signage and just kind of being overly informative. So we layered on um, ambassadors and greeters that kind of helped people navigate the shopping center as best we could um, during the pandemic. All of this blue signage is transitioning to the yellow signage, which you see on your far left, which is to healthy habits. So we're still talking about, because we still do have um, mass protocols in place for those that aren't uh, vaccinated. Um, we are still encouraging people, you know, hand washing. Um, some retailers and restaurants do have mask protocols in place. So we're trying to be mindful of that as well. Um, and then also uh, social distancing if it's appropriate. So you see all of that. And then also be kind, um, which is not hard to do in this community. Um, next up, um, I just include this slide because it's fun to talk about my outdoor plaza. Um, we are reimagining that interactive fountain. You'll see some changes here um, coming up in the next couple of months. Um, and then Stonefire Pizza. Um, I really appreciate the city working with the Uber and the Uber Eats and, and those programming because some, one of the things that the restaurants experienced during the pandemic were these increased delivery fees. And in some cases they were upwards of 30% of the total cost of the ticket. And that really started to eat into, as you can imagine, um, their bottom line. And so um, the, the city worked with putting a cap on that. Uh, I can't remember the cap off the top of my head, um, but se severely reducing the amount of fees charged to, to the restaurateurs. So that's been significant. We are st starting to see um, those uh, restaurant levels start to come back to 2019 um, uh, sales levels, which is great. Here's an aerial um, of our shopping center. I like to include it because as you may be familiar, that parcel behind us, which is known to us uh, affectionately as the Gagos parcel, um, was once empty and had been empty for since 1977, I suppose, when the mall was built. Um, today, it now has um, upwards of close to 300 homes. They're fully sold out. Um, and so that's a new aerial, which is just kind of nice to see um, for those that haven't had a chance to, to drive through it lately or haven't driven through it at all. Um, beautiful homes back there. We're happy to have them back there. It's nice to have it filled in around us. Um, and then of course that's our new site plan. And I don't know, I think that wraps up all of my comments for you guys. Um, how long did I take, John? I, don't know, I almost took an hour, that was a long time. Um, well, thank you for bearing with me and thank you for sticking in with all of that information. I know that was a lot to, to digest and I appreciate your time. Um, that, that concludes the presentation, John.
Thank you, Kelly. Um, if, if you'd go back real quick to the Gagos parcel, I just... Sure, pre or post. Yeah, yeah, what's... Uh, po yeah, there, that, that's the one. Um, so so the, the land that's right there on uh, Cisk Road, it's empty still, is that gonna be commercial? So right now there's, so there's 15 acres that was planned for commercial. Um, and then I believe they've actually expanded further to the west already. I think this aerial might be eight months old now. Okay. Yeah, it's, you, it's great to have them back there. It's yeah, nice. do you have any idea what they're trying to put in there? I don't. I don't. And at one point, I, I saw that they were also looking to uh, add in apartments at one point. So I'm not sure if that was on the, the 15 acre piece of that or not. Okay. And then if you, I don't know if you want to go back up to this, but there's the map of, of your trade area and something oh, sure. stood out to me. I wanted to point out Yeah. Uh, that I kind of remember your predecessor talking about it. Todd. Uh -huh. Yeah. Many years ago now. Um, but if you look at competitive centers, I think most people don't realize this. When you look at that, that dot, you've got Gilroy, you've got San Francisco, premium outlets, I think in Livermore area, Dublin area. Um, uh, there's really not much competition though, local. I mean, I think people think, oh, Stockton has malls and you know other places have malls, but the truth is you guys kind of blow everybody out of the water, right? Yeah, our truly the, the closest competitor to us or what or that can compete on a merchandising level is um, the San Francisco premium outlets, which we all know is in Livermore. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, from a merchandising standpoint, absolutely. And, and that's really what we talk about when we, we talk about courting tenants and, and why tenants come here is is because of the merchandising mix, but also because of the level of merchandise that our tenants are bringing to bear and they're, and they're having success selling, which is why it was so important for, for Leela to talk about Chanel, to talk about Joe Malone, that we even got Joe Malone. Um, you know, it's only, I think nine other uh, Macy's got them when they rolled them out. And so it's really, it's significant um, because truly our, our closest competitor is, is again in Livermore, um, south of us would be Fresno. We, we own Fresno. So that, that works for us. So, and, and it, it actually, um, boosts our leveraging power because if you want a presence in the central Valley, and when we talk about the central Valley, we talk about Modesto all the way down to Fresno, you really need to be in, in one of, in both of Mesa Rich's centers. So we, we talk about that all the time and the strength of that. And, and, you know, I just recently came from Fred from Fresno, moving up from there, and so it's it's a natural conversation for me to have with a prospective tenant as we're walking and talking about the Valley Market. So, so on that note, and then I want to make another point too, kind of related, but on that note, a question: uh, Is there leverage? Uh, so, if if, a, if say Fresno's got an anchor tenant or a, a you know a, a tenant that Modesto would want. Uh, is there any kind of leverage with in Mace Rich that, hey, if, if you're in our Fresno mall, you should also be in our Modesto mall as well? Does that help you attract tenants? Absolutely, because, you know, a lot of it, you know, so much of retail is relationship driven. I mean, it, it's it's a big industry, but it's a small industry, um, if that makes sense. I mean, there's um, so it, it absolutely is, is, is relationship driven and, and, and helpful to, to talk about when, if they're going in at Fresno, they're absolutely need to be going in at Modesto. I can't think of a single tenant unless I don't personally want them that if they're in Fresno, shouldn't be in Modesto. Like that's, that's a given. <laughs> that's how I see okay. it. <laughs> and, and our leasing team is, is well versed. So our leasing rep, um, that we have right now for Modesto leases, uh, Fresno also, um, and has for years. And so. So we talk about that all the time. Okay. And the same thing for Arden, you know, Mace Rich manages Arden Fair in Sacramento, which this group may, or may be familiar with. Um, and so we're, we're talking to, to tenants that would be good fits for our property all the time. All right. And then again, going back to your predecessor, he made a presentation to the chamber board years ago 
and, and this may be for you or Leela or both of you to answer. Um, and, and one of the things that he had said, and one of the things the chamber board members um, had said, and, and Craig probably was in this meeting, is they were kind of talking about the, the levels, for example, of Macy's that, uh, you know, being in the Central Valley, I'm going to say there's a uh, more of a blue collar feel, there's more of a middle class feel. And so um, the level of the products that was at the mall would not even be the same as, say, in the Bay Area. Um, it sounds like, though, what I'm hearing from Leela a little bit is that maybe some of that's changing, that, that we are getting more high-end mm -hmm. lines and products in some of our retail stores. Is that accurate? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm absolutely seeing that. I mean, I think it goes back to spending potential. And when you talk about spending potential, you talk about cost of living and discretionary income. And um, that's where the conversation, that's where we go in the conversation when we're courting um, tenants that, and we're trying to educate them on the market because from the outside looking in, you're looking at the economic drivers are, and, and, but you have to get beyond that to look at, okay, but well, what is the discretionary spending potential here? And, and what are they spending on? They are spending on, on good brands, high value brands. Anyone else have any questions for Kelly or Leva? Just unmute yourself if you want to talk. Well, let me just add real quick while people are, are thinking about maybe unmuting or finding the button. Oh, I really appreciated Craig's presentation last week, not last week, feels like last week, last month <laughs> on, on the leasing activity um, as it relates to the office and the industrial and, and, and even the retail. So I, it was, it was uh, very helpful, very informative and, and something that we obviously keep a, a, a look on or keep an eye on. Thank you. Yeah, we had to get him to step down his chair before he'd actually do a presentation. <laughs> so. nice. Go ahead, Craig. I just said thank you, Kelly. And I think your presentation here was very encouraging. And it's, uh, it's nice to see the higher end a little bit more. In addition to Macy's trying to attract the, uh, you know, through the backstage concept. Yeah. That's an exciting thing that I don't think the community really knows too much about. You know, they keep asking for Norson's Rock. Well, we have it here and yeah. makes it backstage. And I think that needs to be promoted. That's the first time I've heard it. And I'm in the business, so. Yeah. Yeah, truly. And I'm glad you, you brought it up that way because it, it, it truly is an answer to that, um, that element. Right. And, and, um, and, and what I appreciate about it is that we found a way to include it in ours in a way that, that keeps all of that, that effort and focus on this asset, on this mall, you know, not, you know, in another part of the, um, property or, or somewhere else. And so, um, yeah, it, it's, it's been great. And, and one of the things I didn't mention that I meant to is that we have, um, roughly, and, and, and this is, I should have made a bigger point of this. I just, it slipped my mind because I have way too much on my brain as you can, as you heard earlier. Um, but we have an excess of 20,000 square feet of retail space that has um, recently been um, renovated or refreshed. What we call it is a refresh. And, and the reason I point that out and, and, and call attention to that is, is, is that it's significant reinvestment of our existing retailers in their concepts that exist today on mall. And so not only are we seeing um, strong leasing activity, but we're also seeing ac that activity from a renewal standpoint and a reinvestment standpoint in their current assets here at the mall. So it sounds like it's alive and well, and that's very, very encouraging for our community. Indeed, indeed it is. I'm a little fascinated to learn that you guys are related to Santana Row because that's kind of the area I grew up in and that's a well, beautiful shopping center. So, so May search is not related. I'm related when I worked at Santana Row. Oh, got so it. a little bit of a, sorry about that. A little bit of a, a confusion there. Um, I worked over in San Jose for some, for some time. It's a beautiful asset and they, yes. they really, um, that outdoor shopping environment, um, 
has has really uh, it took a little bit, I think, to hit their stride because yeah. there's so many nooks and crannies of that property that make it cool, you know. Um, but it's, it can be, um, but it's a great it's a great asset. And Valley yeah. Fair, as it sits right across the street from Valley Fair, um, has changed quite a bit, also. Right, um, isn't that Westfield now? Yes, Westfield yeah. Rodomco something. Like yeah. Three words. <laughs> yeah. <can't> <laughs> that yes. I liked it much better when it was just Westfield. It was easier. Like, uh, Maggiano's is one of our favorite restaurants when we go down there to see my dad now. Great restaurant I, down there. It is. I love Maggiano's and I loved how it was situated right on the plaza. You mm-hmm. could sit inside. It was really enjoyable. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Um, um, when you were working with the interior retailers being open, yet your, your common space is being closed, if you had an interior retailer that had someone develop COVID during this transition, would you, would they just shut their store? Would they navigate it? Or would you have to be involved with managing that with the other stores around? So they navigated it specifically with um, our county health and, and depending on, on, well, and I actually, it's not depending on each experience. So, so each store had to close for a period of time while they did a a recleaning is what the, what the guidance was. But it didn't wipe out like this whole section in one store on either it side. Didn't, kind of but what was it didn't? But what was really challenging is is that de- depending on the type of tenant it was and, and their their strength of, of of stores in the market, they couldn't necessarily bring a full staff back in to restaff the next day. And so, in some cases, you saw tenants that were closed for several days because they couldn't get that staffing in to help them because if, if one, as you guys know, is if one person was sick and then they had close proximity or had worked within, you know, the the certain timing, then it took the whole staff out. Even if the whole staff wasn't sick, they were presumed until proven otherwise. And in the meantime, you know, they couldn't staff the store. And so, and so you saw some of that. Yeah. Unique because you guys are, you know, side by side, all your retailers are so side by side. It's a unique environment. Yeah. And, and for us, because they did, they didn't affect one another because each individual store has its own individual operating area, meaning um, its own HVAC, its own, it's self-contained, if you will. Um, And so um, it didn't necessarily affect their, their counterpart, but we're still seeing some of those staffing challenges. So as you experience some of our restaurants and you may or may not um, out in the market, you'll see. um, And I think we, we saw this, you know, pre-COVID, you'd walk into a restaurant thinking, oh, I can sit down right away because they have all these booths open. And they'd say, oh, well, it's a 45 minute wait. What? Well, it's not a 40, but I can sit right now. There's no waiting. I can sit right now. And it was all based on, well, they only had a certain amount of people servicing that area. That's what they're still doing right now. And so there's there's that. And until we can get through the, the remnant effects of the stimulus payment, which was a keep, which was keeping people at home, um, because and not needing to work, um, I think we're still going to continue to see that. So one of the things that we did for the the tenants about a couple about a month ago now was a job fair, and we invited um, Opportunity Stanislaus to participate in that. I don't think it was the right time for them, um, so so we may come back and do another one, but um, and include them in it. But um, it's we had over fifteen tenants participate in that. Um, because there's just such a need. There's just, there's a need to, to bring people back to work. I've heard that from every sector that I've talked to in the last three to four weeks, they can't get people to come back to work. Yeah. It's, it's a challenging, it's a challenging environment for sure. I mean, they're, they're doing a great job and, and um, so uh, yeah, it's just going to be, it'll be interesting. And I, it makes me wonder too, like what our sales really could be if, if we had everything filled that we needed filled, right? Everybody back to work doing full steam, full, full calendars, full, just full steam ahead. Um, so, it, and that also gives me some optimism for going into the back half of 21, because I do think that we will get there, um, certainly in Q3 and Q4. Yeah, I agree. Anyone else have any questions? I have a question. (laughs) 
<laughs> are there any retailers that you guys want to see at the mall that are missing at the mall? I am always open for retailer suggestions. We are constantly asking our employees, our employees, our shoppers rather, um, that question. And so is there any, is anything missing that you guys would wanna see here? Aside from Dave and Buster's, Dave and Buster's is still planning to come. Um, they are still coming, they're coming uh, fall of 2022. They were delayed for all the reasons that you would imagine family entertainment was delayed during COVID. So we are on track with their opening in 2022. I have been, along with many friends, always amazed that Old Navy has not made it into Modesto. And I think they'd be great out at the mall. Yes. Where's the closest Old Navy? Well, Turlock put one in and yeah. Manteca has one. It went into Turlock just a few years ago. San Francisco Premium Outlets has one. Great. <laughs> 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 right. uh... Yeah, I could, uh, I, Trish, I would have actually, if you had asked me, I would have thought Old Navy was at the mall. I could have swore I've seen it over the years, but yeah. No, even when we, when I still had kids in high school, all the moms group, where are you going to go? We need to go to Old Navy. So where are we driving to? Is it going to be Stockton? And then it was Manteca. And why can't we get one in Modesto? Yeah. There was rumor of it towards Riverbank hasn't happened, but it did then pop up in Turlock. It's like, we still need our own here in Modesto. Well, and I think, you know, as I look back on the last few years, you know, and, and, and I'm recalling some of the things that you you were experiencing is that they really shifted to the outdoor environment. And that's part of where that, why they went, I think to Turlock is they had that new strip center or new center being developed. Um, but the interesting thing about that is, is we brought in a tenant and I'm looking at my map right now, trying to remember the, it's, um, Oshkosh. Annie, help me with the, what's the beginning of the name? Um, who? You said Carter? Yes, thank you. Sorry, it's Carter slash Oshkosh. Um, they are traditional strip center um, tenants. They, we convinced them to come into the mall, you know, it just by pure numbers alone on, on the strength of the, the merchandising mix that we have. And, and they've been doing fantastic business. And so if there's a, a hope for sort of flipping what is traditionally an outdoor use uh, retailer to indoor, I think uh, Carter's lays a good foundation for that and a good reason for that. So we'll definitely, I'll definitely share that with our leasing team for sure. Is all of your out, uh, outdoor space filled again or now? Um, I have two spots in my outdoor plaza. One is, is totally uh, gray shell space. Um, uh, it's a small space. And then the other one um, is coach. And so we have two spots out there that, that are available. Um, but yeah. So you have options. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, we have options. We have options. Leasing doesn't like to have bare space, obviously, but I, as a property manager, I, I, I don't shy away from space because it gives us flexibility to, to bring new tenants and it gives us flexibility to try things out. Um, and, you know, through our temporary tenant program too. So it's, it's exciting to kind of move things around a little bit and, and see, um, you know, see what can work. So Kelly, I, I just want to say that um, one of the things I've always said, uh, even when I was at the chamber, you know, part of the, uh, and I hope I don't offend anybody on the call, but part of what I saw at the chamber and working downtown, even before I was at the chamber, is kind of the, there, there's a, a group of people who live in Modesto who think downtown is it. And that's the only place people go. And my argument was always, I think the mall is rivals that to some extent that you have a certain group of people that live in Modesto that love to go downtown and love to go there. But um, you also have a lot of people that love to go to the chains. And I just think the mall's done a really good job of bringing in um, you know, the kind of the right mix, whether it's, you know, Buffalo Wild Wings or even, you know, Chipotle and BJ's and, and uh, Chili's and so forth, that, that there's a lot of people that the mall's kind of their destination um, to go eat. And I, I would think that's really helped the mall as well, because you have a lot of customers, consumers going to the mall that may never step foot in the actual mall on a given night, but will go there and and spend money at your uh, restaurants. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and you know, I, I think too, a, a stronger downtown just makes for a stronger community overall. And so we're uh, really happy to see the, the growth of the downtown and, and where we can promote that. We want to be promoting that. And, and we think just a stronger retail environment, a stronger retail offering, um, you know, overall um, is just is better for the community. I mean, so, I mean, it's, it's interesting, right? It's because people, and it's funny, I, I wrote down a, a little thing while you were talking, we were coming back to, and not that it, it's ever gone away, but retail therapy is, is really what a lot of what we saw people um, participating in in 2020 because of a lot, a lot of reasons. I mean, uh, my sister always used retail therapy as her own therapy for, you know, forever. But, you know, last year we saw even, I think more of that as some of that pent up demand um, was needing a place to, to express themselves and, and shop. And so, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's a good thing and you can have both a, 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 a productive and, and energetic downtown area in combination with the super regional mall. It's kind of like the best of both worlds for people, um, you know, visiting or just even living and working here in town. Lots of options, more options, the better. So, so I'm not trying to extend this. So you take the full hour and a half. We're almost there, but uh, real, real quick. Um, and, and I may, if something may already be there. I don't even know, but in Dick's old space, what, what, do you, what are the plans for that? And then my second question is um, when I was at the chamber, um, we, we did a lot when the new ownership of Carino's came on mm -hmm. for them and, and tried to kind of publicize that a lot. How are, how are they doing in general? Okay. Um, so the former pad space, the former out parcel that Dix used to occupy, um, we have a temporary tenant coming in and then we will be announced. Uh, they actually just took occupancy on 7-1. Um, and then we'll be talking about and announcing um, a permanent tenant uh, middle of 2022. So it is backfilled. It is leased. It's, it's kind of leased twice over. <laughs> <laughs> which was perfect timing for us. So, so, uh, yeah. spirit. Yeah, it really is. So spirit Halloween, um, just took occupancy on seven one. So they'll open up in that location and they'll be there through, um, the end of the year. Um, if there's an opportunity to squeeze in, um, additional use between when spirit leaves and the new tenant takes occupancy mid-year, then we're, we'll do that. You'll see an evolution of that space again. Um, hopefully we're kind of working on some things. Andy's working on some things um, for that. So stay tuned for that. Um, Johnny Carino's, I think like uh, like the rest of the restaurants experienced some, some pretty significant hits this past year and worked very hard to, to reimagine um, their space. And I think they've done a good job of that, um, but it's, really in line with with the rest of what the restaurants have experienced and and i will say i'll just add to that you know in partnership with the city they were able to pop up some additional outdoor areas like we saw happen all over the city um, i really expected and may search was willing to bring to bear some additional resources to expand some of those outdoor seating areas if we needed to um, if they decided like look this is working for us this is a good permanent solution we were ready to walk hand in hand with them in that investment I was surprised to see that all of them contracted back. Um, and, and I think, you know, part of it is, is the weather, right? So it's just the timing, 106 degrees. There's not much you can do out there and still encourage people to stay out there. Um, and then also the staffing. So, um, so you won't see, um, so the ones that had outdoor seating, they still have it. Um, uh, Pre-COVID, they still have that. And then any of the others that did sort of the temporary pop-ups, those have all come down now. And I think that's been the case with downtown too, right? I think I was, I was, haven't got dri driven all through there, but um, there's a couple areas I saw that just didn't have in, anything up anymore. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I mean, I, I, others probably know better than me, but it's, it seems like what I've seen is some of the downtown has gone away and some of it has become more permanent and, and bigger mm -hmm. and expanded, especially on J street. So, okay. um, but any, any other questions for Kelly? I just have a quick question. Um, I'm, I'm not that familiar with the mall. I'm new to the area, but uh, do you have a Barnes and Noble or a bookstore? 
We don't. So the closest Barnes and Noble is at Stock is in the Stockton Mall, which I think it's the Shrew Weberstown Mall. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember. I've been here for the last three years. I don't know if we had one once upon a time. Holly, we have a Barnes and Noble on McHenry at um, Stanford oh. currently. They've been open for years. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Trish. You're welcome. All right. Well, um, with that, um, Patricia and Craig, you both joined us midstream. What we normally do is we like to enter have everyone introduce um, themselves. So Patricia, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Sure, please. thank you. Uh, my name's Patricia Lord. I'm new to Stanislaus County. I'm a management consultant in the chief executive office. So I uh, support the assistant chief executive officer. And one of the areas I'm involved with is um, economic development initiatives, including the regional tourism roundtable. So interested in learning more about what's what's going on. Great, great to, great yeah. to have you. And Welcome. I appreciate the presentation, Kelly. It's great. It's good, good to hear all the positive news of uh, things going on. Yeah. There are positive things happening. <laughs> yes. Craig, would you like to introduce yourself now? I guess so. Uh, Craig Lewis with Lewis Capital uh, Advisors. Uh, longtime chamber member and uh, member of the community and just excited to see all the positive news. I am just thrilled, in fact, uh, that it is as positive, positive as it is. Yeah. And thank you, Kelly. It was very, very yeah. good. And I'm excited for the future. And mm -hmm. uh, let us uh, let the community know don't keep it such a secret. <laughs> we try. Let everybody know. Well, you just have to you just have to look at the bottom of the article for the positive stuff. <laughs> but a little bit more on social media and advertising and letting us know how great it is. I think we'll pay dividends for you. Yeah. Send us your one pagers, Kelly. We'll put them out for you as a chamber member. That's one of our favorite things to do for members. Okay. Be great. Yeah, I, I was going to announce that too. I think chamber members always, uh, and government agencies, uh, like the county, like the city, uh, um, a, lot, a lot of times forget that the chamber of progress has announcements. Oh, great. Uh, people on the move and just regular announcements and that you can always submit them and... Uh, um, that that's something that's always very again free, very beneficial. So, great, we, thank you. We carry everything over to social media, which is quite robust for us now. So, send stuff at us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, to wrap this up, um, August at this point, um, we have some potential speakers, but like Kelly. We can't announce our tenants. We can't announce our speakers until we confirm. Uh, <laughs> but uh, September looks like um, Keith Boggs from the county and David Lehman will be presenting on the Crows uh, Landing oh, Development good. Project. They'll be updating us. Um, Keith confirmed this morning. Now it is tentative for those of you who know Keith and, and Craig knows this uh, <laughs> from PC. He's got a history of kicking at the last minute, uh, his presentation's down a month or so. But um, uh, I do know he's making the rounds on this development project. So anyways, we he's, they've spoken several times before. Very exciting economic development project for the county um, with, with uh, you know, all sorts of benefits from those of us who work in Modesto. And uh, um, so anyways, that'll be September. And, uh, and then we'll update everyone as we get, we secure more speakers, so. Great. All right, any, any last announcements, Trish? Uh, nothing big coming to mind. You covered GRC also will be on always the uh, third Friday. These are always the first Wednesday. Um, our Stanislaus Green Team and Sustainability Efforts, they meet always on the third Thursdays and check our uh, community and featured calendar on our website, all of these things, we, that, that's only about a third of the things we have going on. So 
follow us. If you're not getting our e-blast, let us know because that's direct messaging right to you. That's a simple addition. And then check our social media feeds. Our most active is Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. You know, yeah. Uh, Go I, ahead, Greg. I, thought, I just thought of something. Uh, you know, maybe we ought to have Trish and you and uh, the Economic Development Division of the Chamber give a report. And, and from their perspective, you know, what's going on? Maybe uh, we have missed that through the years is actually have an internal report uh, telling us from their perspective how things are going. We will make note of that and discuss it. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, speaking of government relations, I guess I, since I'm the chair, I should announce. So this month we are having um, Supervisor Vito Chiesa, and he'll be talking about some county initiatives for businesses for COVID relief and uh, getting back on track. And, uh, and then I think the uh, rep from the U.S. Chamber will be also be there to talk about what they're doing in Washington, D.C. And so that should be a very enlightening thing. And Patricia, you're, you're also welcome to come to that. Um, GRC and EDC at the chamber kind of overlap at times. So you should okay. Thank you. get uh, you know, government people there and talking about economic development as well, so. Perfect, thank you very much. All right, and of course um, Bob too, you're always welcome. Uh, I will make one last uh, to where you started on this, John. We are waiting. Um, Thanks to breakdown in supply chains, we have 13 of our 40 new chairs here and we've been waiting for the rest to arrive. They're due <laughs> any day within the next week or so. So anticipate uh, having the opportunity to come in person next month with a hybrid option. We'll definitely maintain a hybrid option at least for a couple of months and we'll see how that goes right. and see how we need to evolve that. But I'm really hoping to have a meeting before this month is out in person. <laughs> we just need seating. Hey. And it is furniture, and there's new paint in there, and new lighting in there, and so it's bright nice. and fresh in nice. there. <laughs> Great. Well, and Trish, you're in your chamber office instead of your house, so that's that's good to see as well. Yep, we're right. all back in here ninety percent of the time, just depending on needs. But we're back. Doors are unlocked as of this week, so come by anytime. Great. Great. All right.